everyone. It's so good to be back here. There's a couple of familiar faces in the room, but um, for everyone else, I'm, I'm Caitlin and I'm, I'm so glad to be here talking teamwork with you this afternoon. Um, so I gather you are sitting in your project teams, is that right? How long have you been in your project teams for? Two weeks. Two weeks? Okay. So have you had time to um, talk about roles and expectations between team members in the group, you know, who's going to coordinate, make sure everyone turns up on time, someone to bring the beer, that sort of thing? Yeah? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> a little bit of that going on. Okay. That's from, from experience, that was a very important part. So what we're going to, to talk about this afternoon is, is about um, our, our strengths and, and what we can bring to the team. So hopefully after today's session you'll understand yourself and your team members a little bit better um, so that you can work together as a project team. So part of the, the project, um, and Jackie's just confirmed, so 10% of the, the, the um, judging criteria for your project is around teamwork. So you need to demonstrate to the judges that you can work together as a team so by understanding yourself and understanding your teammates, you're going to be able to better demonstrate that. Does that make sense? So, has anyone um, used or done a DISC profile before? Yes. Yeah? Yep. Have you, so done it through, through work and that sort of thing? Yeah, so, so what, what is DISC? Can someone give me an, a bit of a overview? Someone that's done it? Behavioural profiling. profiling, yeah, yeah. And um, what, what it does is, is it lets us look at our preferences. So that's the key thing that I want to, to get across this afternoon, is that DISC is like, yes, it's, it's one of many different behavioural profiling tools. So there's many different ones out there. Um, all have different research behind them. DISC is just one of many. And it lets us look at our preferences behind um, our behaviours. So uh, if we think about, um, if we think about our, our, our natural tendencies, that's what DISC will highlight. So it's not about putting you in a box and saying, you know, you are defined by this and you can't flex or adapt to any other styles. Um, it's about this is your natural tendency and where you feel most comfortable in your work. So we do have your DISC profiles here with us um, tonight. Um, Marion has given those to me. Um, but I'm not going to give them to you yet because we're going to go through some activities um, this afternoon to, to really look at what our um, profiles are. So I'll let you know which um, grouping you belong to for your preference. Um, but we're not going to give you the report because you'll get um, distracted by the contents of the report rather than experiencing the people around you. Um, so just on the preferences, can everyone just grab a post-it note from the centre of the table and one of the texters? So all I want you to do is uh, write your name, first name, last name, on the post-it note. Now take the text star and put it in your other hand and do it again. Write your first name, last name. Doesn't matter. New post-it. Let's waste paper. So have we done that? We've written our first name and our last name. So what I want to hear from you, and I've already, I've already heard a word over here. Um, the second time, what was it like? What was the word you said? Not bad. Not bad? Oh, it's not bad. That's interesting. Yeah. How, how, how was it for everyone else, writing it the second time? Not good. Not good, yeah. Shaky. Shaky. Had to think about it and it was a little less natural, is that what you said? 
A bit awkward. Anything else? Challenging. Challenging? Yeah, okay. Now, the first time, how would you describe that? Natural. Natural. Comfortable. Comfortable. Easy. Didn't have to think about it. Easy. Yeah? So, when we look at our disc profile, um, we, we have one that is our natural style. Um, it's our natural preference for, for that, um, for, for that behavioural style. It's not to say that we can't do it. You know, we, we can be in the other spaces and, and work with the other styles, but it, it might feel a bit more awkward. And, you know, it's not bad. We can still do it, um, but it's just a little less comfortable um, for us. So does that make sense, that you'll have a preference for, for doing it one way or the other, just like you have a preference for writing in one hand or the other, not to say that you can't use the other hand, it's just not your natural preference. Yeah? Okay. So, the Lego on the table. I can see that some of you have already um, started to, to build some things, so I'm very sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to dismantle those. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, there's some creative activity, but what we're going to do is use that in a moment. Um, but before we get into the Lego, I'm going to split you into some, some groupings based on the results of your, your disc profiling. So, and I'm going to split, there's five, there's five, uh, sorry, there's four groupings. Um, so it'll be a letter D, I, S or C. Um, however, one of the groups, just because of the, the way that the profiles came out, one of the groups is quite large, so I'm going to split you into five groups so that we don't have 100 people at one table. So, um, where will I start? Can I get uh, Chanel Egan and Ashley McKellar to sit at the front table? I'll get... So at this second table here, I need Rachel Callahan, Scott Baker, Jared Fair, is it Niran Varma, Reese Marini, and Bridget Anderson. <laughs> so at the third table, can I get Kane Rathbone, Aaron Curtis, Michelle Curtis, Andrew Fisher, Brody White, Sam Noakes? That's at this table here. <laughs> and Hayley Parsons at that table. Did we get Hayley? Hayley at that table? Yes, okay. Um, can I get Scott Robertson and Bin Chen to, um, there's only two of you, so I might just get you to sit at one of these front tables here. If we just clear a space there. And. Oh, it, it, it's, yeah, a quick activity, it'll be fine. Um, so, and then at this table here, we'll have Mich no wait, D-I-S. So we'll have Michelle Richards, Timothy Higgins, uh, Baha uh, Chaichi, have I got that right? Um, Rob Russell, Joe Dowling, and Nicholas Oliveri, is it? Did anyone not get assigned a table? Okay. So, here's some Lego. So, with the Lego, so if there's anything already made in front of you, can you just pull it apart?
So here's your instructions. In your table groupings, you're going to, um, to build how you like to operate. And there's three questions to help you think about that. So how do you like to receive information? When you are being communicated to, what frustrates you? And how do you show up under pressure? So you need to use the Lego as a group to build things that represent how you like to operate in those spaces. So I'm going to give you five minutes. So chat amongst yourselves and start building. Alrighty. So hopefully you've built some things in front of you that you feel represents how you operate um, as, a, as a group of people. So what I'm going to get each group to do is describe to, to the rest of us what you have built and why. So what I might do is start with the group at the front here. So what were your names? Chanel and Ash. Chanel and Ash. Um, can I get you to describe to everyone what you have built and why? Um, the first one is uh, we like to receive very structured and clear information, like in dot points. Do you want to show everyone that? <laughs> We're very cool and exciting people. And, uh, so you like things to be clear and detailed and easy to understand. And what else have you built? When we're being communicated to, we would like the information also. Um, what, frust oh, what frustrates us is when the information doesn't actually make sense um, for us <laughs> in a way. So we have a, a trike with square wheels to represent that. Okay, so you would you would prefer the other way of the the structure, the nice colours, the yep. everything's good, and your tricycle with um, square wheels. You like that's that's when you get frustrated. It doesn't make any sense at all. Get it out of here. Yeah. Okay. We'll while we're at this table, I'll, I'll get um, you two to to present. What do you, what have you built and why? So to, to start with, the, how do we like to receive information? We were actually quite the opposite. We were face to face, so here's my little man. Ah. And here's my little man, and we're going to, yeah, so they talk together. Um, when you're being communicated to what frustrates you, we both agreed that when people um, hold back and don't talk to you as frank as possible and as clear and honest, so they keep it in a little box. Oh, sorry, what's the box? Uh, the people keeping things contained and not being, you know, out in Oh, let me see what's in the box. Yeah. Don't hide it away from me. Yeah. Okay, got you. Yep. And then, how do you show up under pressure? Mine was, I tend to get a little bit loud, so I made a little jet. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. All right, so you want... Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so the box has a dual meaning. Okay, yeah, yeah. So... Um, did everyone get that over here? There was there was the face to face communication with the little people. There was the box was um, what was it? You 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 like to be by yourself sometimes? Is that? I mean, you know, I didn't have kind of pressure. Yeah. Oh, under pressure, you can you can be with, withdrawn and, and um, in yourself. But also, the box was also representing um, information sharing. So don't keep it in the box away from us. Share it with us and. Um, I guess in a, in a kind of opposite way, you, you under pressure you tend to get a bit loud, is that? A bit vocal. A bit vocal, bit okay. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so there, there was some consistencies there though. Thank you for sharing um, your wonderful people and box. And Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> this table, what have you built and why? Sure. Um, we like it, similarly to these guys, ah. but we like information to become complete, whereas you guys are half filled. <laughs> uh, we like information to be succinct to the point and all of it up front to start with. Okay, okay. So that you're starting with all the information as opposed to being group, group, uh, group Okay. Groups. What else have you got? What frustrates you? What frustrates you? 
is useless information that doesn't work or doesn't serve a purpose. Mainly you just information that doesn't work. In any way, shape or form that you try. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> so that's just a, it's a, a nothing it's thing. A, it's, just, it's just useless. Okay, all right. <laughs> Won't even stand up, it's falling apart. Got you, okay. <laughs> under pressure. Yep. Just like an F1 team, it will be very streamlined, processor oriented, and it will be very quick and effective. Is that a little factory? <laughs> no, that's a refueling station. Oh, oh refueling station. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. So, um, sorry, sorry, why is it a refueling station? What was the meaning no, behind it? No, 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 Okay, it's just, it's just a generic, here's a thing. <laughs> okay, so, but the main points were, give us a full set of yeah, we like information. Yeah, we information up front, but the point. Okay, and, um, and not, not something that's useless and going to fall apart. Okay? And under pressure will be very effective. And what is it? Under pressure will be very effective. Oh, you're very effective. And streamlined. Effective and streamlined under pressure. Okay, okay. Good. How do you, how do you um, was, was it the data set, was that about how you um, like to communicate with each other? Yeah, because oh, under pressure, without communication, you cannot uh, do a refueling because there are, there are many aspects of it, like changing the tires, refueling, uh, checking uh, the engine, etc, etc, etc. So communication and teamwork is key. Communication and key teamwork is key. Okay, good. Thank you. So, if we can just have our attention to the table at the back here, um, what have you built and why? <laughs> Sorry, we'll just have one conversation up here. So, but how do we like to receive information? So, transparent, clear. Oh! <laughs> it's a window for anyone who can't see it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, good, good. Yep, so we've got sort of two, two um, opposing <laughs> views on that. Yep, okay, good. And what else have we got there? So under pressure, we agree that we want to be Star Wars like effective <laughs> and fast, focused to the point, <coughs> chasing down those um, attack <laughs> Okay, all right. All right, so we're give us the clear information, don't give us to it in a mess. We're going to be effective under pressure. Is what's this? Is this another thing? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make the cut. <laughs> okay, so that's everything that you built? Okay, and um, okay, so the communication point was about the, the, the transparency and the clarity, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. And this group down the front, what have we built? So I built a little computer. So I like to receive all my information digitally. Right. Um, it just leaves evidence, it leaves control over everything. Um, yeah. And I think that maybe we also like our information bit by bit. Because we just, just put this together. We're just like, oh, we'll put this here. Okay. Yeah. I think it could be more purpose. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I guess being able to you know, survey and, and assess the information and have the value. But yeah. we also seem to overthink the uh, thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, you kind of spent a lot of time at the start just going like, oh, she didn't really tell us what to do. <laughs> what do we do with all the Lego in front of us? Okay, 
Yep, so telecom tower, we've got our computer. Um, It, nothing oh, about yeah. it makes sense. Like, yeah, it yeah. Make sense. It's not grouped in any way. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not clear what I should do with it. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Um, did did everyone feel like you you were were thinking similarly to the people that you were working with in that task? Yeah. No. <laughs> Is there? Okay. Okay, but is that maybe because the, the information wasn't clear to start with? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, in the groups that you are in, I'll let you know... Actually, no, we'll go through some information first. So, this is just a little bit of background on DISC and what <coughs> DISC is. So, um, there's some psychological research done that basically says that there's, there's two groupings of people, which brings us four groups. So if we think of one axis as um, being uh, that people can be outgoing um, or reserved or introverted, extroverted, depending on which profiling tool you're looking at, um, you know, people can be on a spectrum from, from those two extremes. On the um, other axis, it's about being task-oriented and people-oriented. So again, spectrum, but it lets us sort of broadly categorise people into these for groupings, which become the DISC groupings. So someone who is task-oriented and outgoing tends to be um, results-driven. They're, they're very confident. They um, can be quite competitive. Um, they're very assertive personalities. Um, the table at the front here, you were in the D category. The um, outgoing and people-oriented group. Make sure I've got this right. So this this is the two groups that I had split up. Um, so both of these tables were, fell into this category. Um, so people-oriented and outgoing. This is the influencing group. So this group places a lot of emphasis on um, relationships and um, persuading people and influencing. Um, people, it's, it's very relationship driven, that communication teamwork comes out really strong in those groups. Um, who was it with the... So the S group, which is people oriented and reserved, which was the guys that were down the back, um, so steadiness, so places emphasis on um, cooperation, steadiness, dependability, relying on each other, so it's still got that people emphasis, like you've built people, so that's quite clear there. Um, but, yeah, lots of cooperation and, and working together. Uh, and task-oriented and reserved is the conscientious group, which is this group down the front here. So it's all about um, quality, accuracy, um, like getting, getting the right information, so very data-driven um, kind of people. Um, so that was this group down the front here. So they're the broad groupings. And what I want to do now is just go into a little more detail into what those mean. And we're going to do another activity in a moment to show how um, understanding yourself and understanding what another person's style might be, how we can communicate best with each other. So if we just zoom in on the dominant group, so the D group, these are some of the, um, the qualities that come, come out when a person has strength in this area. And when you get your profile, you will see that it's not just you fit in one box and one box only. You'll, um, there's graphs and things that show that you spread across multiple areas, all four <coughs> areas, in, to varying degrees. So 
So it's not like a dominant person is only dominant and that's all they can be. Again, it's a, it's a preference um, and people can flex and adapt to other, other, um, other quadrants. So dominant people tend to be um, very driven. They're very, uh, they're natural leaders, natural goal setters. Um, dominant people tend to um, set themselves goals even when there's no goal assigned. So um, if there's you know milestones to achieve um, at work, whether they're, they've uh, been set for them or they'll set their own goals. They'll, they'll just make it happen. Um, very competitive in that way that they need things to achieve. Um, strong willed can be very um, decisive, like they'll just, they just know, they'll make a decision. Um, they, they don't need to, to think about it for a long time. If they've got the, the information in front of them, they can just make a decision on it. Does that make sense for that group? Yeah? So influencing, um, we talked about it a little bit, but these people are very uh, sociable and place a high emphasis on building relationships with each other um, or with other people. Uh, they, they're very collaborative, love working with people. Um, you, you might get um, people in um, sales roles or um, you know, a lot of people in human resources might fall into to this position because it's a very people-oriented role. Um, so, yeah, very, very outgoing. They'll, they'll tend to, to naturally build um, relationships and rapport with people quite easily. Quite charming. Um, yeah, can, can build that relationship really easily. Does that make sense? Again, this is one of four quadrants, not to say that anyone fits wholly and solely into this category, but um, people will have a tendency to have a strength in this area. So steadiness, so the S's, um, this is, it's still got a, a, a people focus and it's about being quite um, tactful and, and humble in their, their approach. So non-confrontational, <coughs> Um, like to be very supportive of each other, um, you know, very loyal and um, reliable kind of people and they like to see those qualities in other people as well. Like to, to be quite inclusive, um, get people involved in their groups. And in the C group, so this is the kind of data driven, they're very analytical people, um, very system systematic, like to be perfectionists, um, not big risk takers, um, like to be kind of orderly in everything that they do. Um, yeah, very, very high on the, the quality side of things. Does that make sense for each of the, the four groups? You can see that they're, they're, there's uh, similarities between them, but they are quite distinct groupings. Yeah? So, um, take note of this because this is going to help us move into our next activity. So, um, we'll just have a look at what, what people are motivated by. Um, so, dominant people are motivated by um, if, if, they, if there's a sudden change, they like to be able to react to that, that sudden change and they'll, you know, they're quite decisive, they'll make decisions about it. Um, they, they like to be supported by the accurate data, um, which I think came out in some of your, your, um, your constructions um, with your, your information that was clear. Um, want things done, just do it right the first time, like kind of don't have, have time for, for um, messing around. Um, high quality standards, um, immediate results, so very driven by let's make it happen. Influencing, this group uh, is motivated by uh, recognition and communication with a broad range of people. 
um, and accept it. So this feeling of belonging is also really important to an influencer. So feeling part of the, the group and having meaning and um, um, yeah, being able to identify with, with that group. The steady group is motivated by um, yeah, an appreciation of work ethic, a supportive environment. So again, these are they're still people oriented, um, but also like to have the um, the reliability of kind of set structures and, and systems and procedures in place. Um, can be can um, be adverse to, to taking risk um, and prefer their world not to be disrupted. So if there's a major change in things that are happening around them, um, they, that, that could be quite stressful for them. And with the C group, um, yeah, a, a detail orientation is really, really important to them. Um, complete explanations of processes. So um, in, <laughs> in that, that activity, and I just kind of said, it's Lego, do what you want with it. And you were kind of like, but why? Um, so, yeah, it, it being able to, to demonstrate your skills and apply the, um, the, the knowledge to that, there's, there's motivation behind there. So does that give you an idea of the different groupings? Do you feel like you understand, so having worked in that group, do you understand that your group of people and you think you understand what the other tables might be thinking and feeling? Because we're going to test that in a moment. Yeah? So, so we're going to stay in our groupings and we're going to do an activity where you're actually going to sell something to another group. So in your, um, your, your collective groups, as you are, uh, you're going to be assigned something to sell to another group. So you need to understand what that other group is motivated by to be able to um, persuade them to, to buy your, your product. So let's see what we've got. The D's and the S's, which is actually um, this group here. So the D's are going to sell to the S's. Your options are a Maserati, a diamond ring, or a rare collector's item orchid worth $500. So they're your options. You've got to pick one of those and you're going to be selling it to the other group. The I group, so the I groups were these two. So you'll be selling to the C group. Your options to sell to that group are skydiving or shares in a startup company turning sugar into vitamins. So, I mean, these are all normal things. The uh, the S group, so you'll be selling back to the D's and your options are a jar of peanut butter, a ream of A4 paper or a computer mouse. <laughs> and the C's are going to be selling back to the I's and your options are a silent yoga retreat or a mindfulness app, or a guinea pig. <laughs> a guinea pig. Yes, you, yes, you did hear me. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to discuss with your group, plan your, your attack and what your sales pitch is going to be, and then we're going to um, do it so that we can, we can all hear and try to sell to the other group, the other motivating one. So I'll put the motivating factors back up so you can think about it. Does anyone need me to say the items again? You good? Alrighty. So we'll get the, the other group to come back down the front. 
and we're going to see how, how you went. So what we'll hear first, we'll start with the, the D's to the S's. So um, if we can have all eyes on the D's and we're going to hear. So firstly, firstly, um, what are you trying to sell? So we've decided to sell a ring. You decided to sell the diamond ring yeah. and you're selling to the, the S group. Yes. yes. Okay. Take it away. Welcome to our welcome to the jewelry store this morning. Um, I'd, um, I understand you're interested in a engagement ring. It's a it's a big step. I'm really glad you've come to us for this. Um, it's it's really uh, really important to find the right ring uh, for that. Going through the oh, list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stand here. Great work ethic once you are. Uh, <laughs> once you start it. Uh, can we, can I, my assistant, can you get out the, the first ring that you'd like to show? This is a very special um, and rare one, which I think will be perfect based on what you told us about your partner. <laughs> <laughs> How did the group go um, trying to sell you uh, the diamond ring? Yeah, I think it's very good and uh, a lot of, you know, we did more funds, you know, bring our attention and uh, I think, you know, if you, we can understand a little bit more, you know, the value, you know, the adapt, you know, the new injury and also, you know, like, you know, in fact, you can the, you know, the value to keep the ring and maybe, you know, like, Oh, like a family heirloom sort of thing. Okay, okay. Uh huh, uh huh. So there were some points in there that you thought, mm, yes, I do want this ring. Was there anything in there for you? Um, yeah, there probably was, but I, I'm one of these shoppers that I probably wouldn't go in and ask. Oh, my God, I'm you were quite surprised around. to be in a ring shop to yeah. start with, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So, thank you, um, the D team, for, for selling your, um, your ring. We're going to move over to another group now. So, we're going to get um, one of the I groups to sell to the C. So, Cs, you are very lucky. You get two different groups trying to sell to you tonight. Um, so, can we start with this group? What have you decided to sell to the C group? Turning sugar into what? The shares in the company? Turning, oh, the shares in the company that's turning sugar, sugar into vitamins. Yeah. Okay. Take it away. Yes. 
You just one collectively. Uh, one of the major uh, problem, health problem faced by uh, people in today's day and age is diabetic problem. And uh, the death rate that's being faced, that, that we are encountering in this, uh, due to this problem is a couple of million uh, people yeah. a year. Um, we are introducing a company called Pyramid Sugar, uh, a new coffee-based company uh, that have come up with this technology that can convert the sugar that we consume. Uh, that could be metabolized into uh, vitamins. The life-saving opportunity is huge, and uh, the government and the local government and the federal government has decided to back this company. And uh, it's, we have also started up branches across the world in America and in Europe. Uh, due to, in order to raise funds, this company has decided to release its shares. And uh, I would like to hand over the stage to my financial uh, expert, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the downside is very limited with these shares, as it's a uh, multi-marketing <laughs> pyramid scheme. <laughs> you can purchase shares in this company very cheaply, and there'll be very limited downside risk with great upside potential. The price of the share? We are starting at $2 a share. What's Thank the you. market cap? No questions. That's the end of presentation. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, thank you, thank you, team, for, for presenting that. What worked? We needed more information on the product. Oh, you needed more? I thought, I thought there was a lot of information. <laughs> That's so interesting. So this team um, had said they need more information. And I was like, oh, that's impressive. They've brought the financial advisor. This is going to go really well. They're going to trust like information. <laughs> Negation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm low on risk. Okay, I'll good, good, good. But still, you needed the you needed to see some graphs or something, some, evidence, some evidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, team. Um, what we might do now is get no. Which way will we go? We'll go the S's back to the D's. So, what did you choose to sell? <laughs> okay, so the. The S group is selling to the D group a computer mouse. Take it away. Oh, okay. Welcome to the mouse shop. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you're in the market for a mouse. <laughs> what do you look for in a mouse? This buttons and plenty of sideways and forward scrolling and it has lots more features that I can't really describe right now. Um, <laughs> it has USB so it's plug and play, it'll work straight away for you. You won't have any setup, it'll just plug in and it'll work. And it's also wireless. So you know you can take it with you and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. And I'll hand over to the salesman now. I was a yeah. technical representative. <laughs> Peanut butter too, is that what? <laughs> Just as a bonus there. Okay, so so how did they go? What what worked, what didn't? Ah, 
interesting. Yep. So that that good. That's exactly um, what we'll go with. <laughs> <laughs> they learned that from the content. Okay. Oh, interesting. To me, that's just a, a dodgy sales thing. And, and I don't, also, interesting, I don't want to be offered the extra things because, you know, if I was buying a ream of paper, would you be throwing it out? And then does that change the value of the mouse? Ah. Um, I want to know what the DPI, like what the, the refresh rate and all that, like how the mouse actually works, detailed specs on it. The sales bit puts me away from it. Okay, so where where we glossed over the functions, perhaps we could have gone in a bit deeper into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Well done, team. Um, I, selling a mouse, that's fantastic. Um, okay, so we'll go the C's back to the I's. So we'll be selling to the I's collectively um, this time. So what, what are you selling? You're going to sell a guinea pig to, to these people at the back here. <laughs> Again, you set the rules. So, um, and anyone in the, the group can, can answer for this one. What worked, what didn't in that sales pitch? Um, I would have preferred to be more um, just, like, you need a guinea pig because everyone's doing like, that whole social <laughs> aspect. Oh, got to gotta get on board. Yeah, you've got to get on board, don't be left behind. <laughs> ah, so the fear of being left behind. Ah, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For me. FOMO. Yeah. Yep, okay. What about anyone else? I think for me, like, if you had said to you keep your on sale with a 10% off, I would be like, I'm done, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Where do I sign? Um, what about the fact that um, that it, it was quite personal, like you actually got someone and, and, and sat sat down and, you know, got to know the, the person a bit. Did that work or not work for yeah, you? It to be more to the point rather than <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. Um, okay, was it, um, and is, was there something else about the the pitch that did or didn't work? No, actually, I think uh, that was a good touch personally, also because uh, uh, the customer have, did not happen to know what kind of pet he was looking for. Yep. If, if he was walking into the store exactly knowing he needs a dog or a cat or a guinea pig, uh, the salesperson wouldn't have to ask so many questions, but since the customer did not know what he wanted, it was the duty of the salesperson to at 
understand what his lifestyle is and then cater for his needs. So hence the salesperson told, uh, sold him a guinea pig. Yeah, uh, even though he had predetermined that he was going to sell a yeah, guinea yeah, pig. Yeah, but, but that yeah. was, yeah. That was a, uh, yeah. trying to find the connection there. Yeah, and yeah. that kind of was the connection I think is a good sales tool. Yeah, okay, good, good. All right. Thank you for selling your guinea pig. So we've got one more group to go. So it's the second I group, back to the C group again. What item had you chosen to sell? Skydiving. Skydiving. All right. Take it away. <laughs> How are you all today? Very good. Fantastic. Um, I've prepared a list of uh, details on skydiving for you. Um, all next Wednesday, the whole company is going skydiving. Okay. Um, we're going to follow up this list with a detailed email of all of the details of the day so that, so that you uh, are aware of the whole process and the uh, full itinerary of the day. So we're going to start off by meeting at 8 a.m. in the morning and then we're going to go to the airfield. We're going to go up with the instructor, the instructor is fully qualified, they've been in business for over 20 years, no accidents, less risky than investing in the sugar. It's <laughs> 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 uh, a totally risk-free risk thing. Um, for the rest of the day, you'll get to uh, take that off and spend it with your family. You'll have, whole, um, <laughs> you'll have a whole new lease on life. Well done. So CEO, I'm calling in sick. So for this table, what what worked, what didn't? I had to know about the weather. Okay. The very detailed email. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> okay, but that that was um that was satisfying just for you to just know that okay, it's it's all written down. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, mitigating the risk again, trying to sell it. We might not believe it, but trying to sell the low risk is not risky, so. Okay, good, good. So, are you going skydiving? I was skydiving. So it is possible, it's possible to sell sky skydiving to see. Sold. Okay, awesome, thank you. That um, that was that was great. Thank you all for, for doing your sales pitches. Um, what we're going to do, what I might get you to do is just move back to the tables you were sitting at originally with your project group. And if the mentors want to join that as well. One thing, before we move on, one thing that I wanted to, to highlight about the, the styles, um, the, the disc profiles, is when you get your report, there's going, you're going to have two different sets of, of data to look at. Um, the C's will be very interested in, in looking at the details behind that. Um, the, you'll have a set of natural um, behaviours and a set of adaptive behaviours. So the natural, and they may or may not be the same. Um, and that's because the natural style is, uh, if, if you are free to be you in the world, that's how you show up and that's, that's, that's where you are most comfortable, that's like you riding with the hand that you normally write with. But um, when you um, think about your adaptive style, that's about when you'll, you'll behave in your adaptive style when you are in a situation where you are aware of your behaviour. So for example, in the work environment, you might be aware of your environment and what you need to do to um, interact well with other people. So if you know the styles of other people or the type of role that you're in, you might change 
you're, you might be slightly different in your personal life to your work life to how you, you act. So that's why there's going to be two different sets of, of information in your, in your report. Um, and again, they may or may not be the same. Some people, I've had a look at the report, some people are, doesn't matter whether they're at home or work, it's, it's the same across the board. Other people do um, change quite differently between those, those two things. So in your project groups, what, um, having just done the, the DIS profile and, and you were spread out at the different tables, what do you notice about your group that you're in? Oh, you're, all, you're very similar. Okay. D you didn't move? <laughs> we moved to that table. <laughs> <laughs> From one table to the other. Okay. Okay. And di very different down here. Okay. So, some, so there are there are differences in in your group. So that you might be broadly the same, and it would be interesting to see whether your um, natural and adaptive styles uh, are still very similar or quite different. But why would we why would we mix people up in groups? So, sorry, can you say your point again? So you don't butt heads. Yeah, because you're bringing you're bringing a different perspective and a different skill set to the team, right? Mm -hmm. And that what was the comment over here? Most of the time, you can't select what team. Oh yeah, for sure. People are different, yeah. so we need to learn how to work together. I think there was another comment over here about working effectively. It was. Yeah, I thought that a mix of all of them, not necessarily equal equal amounts, would make a, the most effective thing. Yeah. D yeah, it brings diversity to the team, so you're not stuck in that, that group think, you're not all thinking the same way, and that could lead to butting heads and just disagreeing with each other, or um, you know, not being creative or innovative in the way that, that you're thinking. So bringing diverse perspectives to the team helps with teamwork. Yeah, right, because you bring a certain strength, but someone else might have a strength that you're like, well, that's my weakness, so. Yeah, we'll be able to come Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, yeah, working well together. So everyone brings their own strength and the, the strength of the team is then lifted. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to move on from DISC into another activity. And we're going to split into, so I'll keep you in your project groups, but we'll split into um, halves. And do we think it's too cold outside if we got one group to sit outside? <laughs> it is too cold. Okay, we might find another room in a moment, um, but we're going to split so that one group will remain in this room. So I might get this team, or actually we're gonna go that way, I'll get this team to stay in this room and we'll find another room for, for this side of the room to move to. And we're going to play a bit of a game. Um, it's, it's called, <coughs> some people might have played this before, and if you have played it, um, just, yeah, keep, keep quiet and don't spoil it for others. Um, and just, just play along. So we're going, we're going to play a, a, a game, so it's going to be um, one team and the other team and you're going to get a set of, of cards. You'll have an option to play a red or a black card in each round, and um, you, can, you can get different points depending on what, which colour you play, and the aim is to maximise the number of points. Um, so uh, it'll all become clear um, as we start to play, and I'll give you um, some information to have in your hand. Um, but... Let's so each group will need to nominate a leader. So um, 
while we move this other team out, can you um, sort out who your leader is going to be? I'm going to give you a red and a black and an instruction card. And this group, let's find another space to be in. And you've both got the exact same instructions. So uh, who's the leader of the group? So each time I come into the room, you are going, I'm going to ask you whether you're going to play red or black. And you are um, talking on behalf of the group. So I'll give you the cards. Um, and so there's going to be six rounds. And each time I come to you, all you have to do is say red or black. And I'm going to, to tally what the what the, the points are. Yeah. So do we, the do we know? Uh, group decision. Yeah. Yeah. Group decision, but you're speaking on behalf of the group. Yeah. Um, you won't know what the other group has played until after the round. Yeah. Okay, so not after all six, after each one. After each one, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, so what are you saying, like, if we, if we play one card all the time, I'll let you. I'll let you decide so, that. Yeah. Uh, the other point I want to make is that so we're going to be have six rounds. At round four, there'll be an opportunity for a conference with the other team between the two team leaders. Okay. So I guess there's a there's a win-win scenario, which is if you play a red. But the risk of that is if they play a black, you get screwed. So well, yeah. surely they'd be thinking about the same. Yeah. yeah. If we go red, is it, but then we just have a point of clarification. Is the objective to <laughs> get collectively the most amount of points or the most amount of points for our team? The aim is to maximise the number of points. Collectively? Collectively. <laughs> right. There you go. So, so it's fair. Right. <laughs> so if you both go red, you get six points every time. Zero, zero, negative six. Yeah, but then... So if one team, but if one team loses six and one team gets six, that's net to zero. So if it's a collective score, you're better off to both play red because then at least you're getting six points every round. We don't win anyway. We'll come down to how they interpret how we're playing. No offence, I want to win. Okay, so I need I need the first round. What colour are you playing for the first round, Bin? Playing red? Show me the red card. Yeah. Okay, cool. The other team playing is black. Ah. Mm. Yeah. What colour are you going to play for round two? Red. <laughs> 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 so they're, they're, they're okay, yeah, no, but, so, so, so let's let's think about it. So they're plus six, we're negative six, so we're still net zero on a total point, right? Yeah. So we're still level. Yeah. And we're and trying to maximise points. So we get red. No, So the other team played black. So we're still at zero. Yeah. Red. Red? 
Yeah, Still red? Yeah. Show me. Yeah. Uh, right. Want to change it up? <laughs> they went black. Yeah. So, um, between this round and the next round, there's an opportunity to have a conference if you'd like to take the opportunity yeah. between the two team leaders. So just have a think whether you want to take that opportunity. Do you want to meet with the other team? Yeah, yeah. We will not yep, so you do. I'll, team, I'll come back and let you know if they want to meet. <laughs> <laughs> Red? Yeah. Let me guess, they went black. <laughs> they played red. Oh. Red again? You're going to go red? Cool. It's always convincing. You should be an influencer, not it? Go sick. Mix it up. They also played red. <coughs> what would you like to play for the last round? Red again? Give them. <laughs> they also played red. Um, so you can sit back at your, your seats. That was an interesting game. Um, can the team leaders um, share what happened at the, the conference? You played black sales. for the first three rounds. Yeah, yep. we were like, yes. get the maximum number of points for us. For your team. And beat yeah. them. Yep. That's the strategy that we're going with. And then after talking with Finn, I was like, well, hang on. But if it is that way, we're still already very far in the lead. So I'm going to play red. Um, and then we agreed we'll both keep playing red. So that we could both get points. So there was very different approaches in the two different rooms. So um, what I observed in, in this room was, um, you know, let's, let's think about how we can work together and get the most points for, for, for the, the greater good. And in the other room, <laughs> there was... <laughs> <laughs> at one point, at one point, um, what, what's your name? Reese, at one point, Reese had actually hidden the red card <laughs> so that Bridget could not play the red card and was trying to force her to play the black card because they were so adamant that, no, we, we've got to win this. We have to win. Um, so, and so it, 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 is, it is a trick question. It's set up that way deliberately to, to, to make you think that, all right, we've been split into teams and we've got to... We've got to um, you know, maximise the points for, for our team. Um, what, what's the reality though? What are we, what are we trying to achieve? Collectively maximise the points? Collectively, yep. Still like well, it's still unclear. Yeah. 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 rules and after the team leaders negotiate and talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting though because you both have the same rules. I, I didn't say anything different to either team. It was just a different interpretation. Our team disagreed. We, we agreed, our team thought it was ambiguous. It could be. We found there wasn't enough detail in the question. Not enough detail. <laughs> Again, not, not enough detail. Yep, yep. Yeah. See, there was two guys and myself who were like, no, it could be either way. Let's play red just in case. And everyone else was like, no. <laughs> Interesting. If you think about how we were grouped before, maybe there was more influence. 
is on your side than it was on ours. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, and perhaps that that might be the case. It might be that that you had more um, people who, who in the room who were able to influence the way others were thinking. Um, also, it's yeah, just interesting that there's a different interpretation in, in the different rooms. Um, so, one group was, took it as a very competitive sense. Um, you know, it's a win-lose situation, whereas the other group um, came to the natural conclusion that it's, it's a collaboration and we need a win-win scenario here. How can we do the best for everyone? And they stuck their grounds. Like, even when, you know, there was three blacks in a row, they could have got really nasty, um, but, but still, still wanted to play that way. <laughs> <laughs> right to the very end. <laughs> so, what's the key takeaway from that that game? Seek clarification. Yeah, oh, good one. Needs the many outweigh the needs of the few. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it's that win that win win point to the game, it was just to see how people would yeah, interpret. And there's still going to be this, this competition between you, between, well we were right and, and you were wrong. <laughs> we were winning and you were losing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be forever. But yes, the point of that, if there's anything to take away from that, it's to consider what the win-wins are in the situation. So we don't have much time left, but I just really quickly wanted to touch on, I just really wanted to um, touch on a, a concept. Has anyone re read Patrick Lencioni's Five Dysfunctions of Teams or heard of? So it's, uh, it, it, it's a book and it, and it, it starts, um, it, it talks about what are the components um, or the factors that make a really dysfunctional team and from that you can deduct what makes a good team. So I thought it might be helpful to share that with you seeing as you're going to be doing some, some um, teamwork together. So his concept, um, his concept builds on each other. So the five points, you, you start with a, a grounding of... Um, to a really dysfunctional team will have an absence of truth. What do we mean by that? No, yes, we, not being truthful, but why would that cause a dis dysfunction in a team? Miscommunication. Lack of trust. Yeah, lack of trust. Why is trust important to a team? You're not being open and honest with it. And why is being open and honest important? Because uh, you're not sharing your true feelings or your true ideas with each other. Just to make sure you're all heading towards that common goal. Um, like, yeah. if you're not sh being truthful, you could be just saying, yeah, yeah, but you're um, doing things to undermine that team. Like, why would I waste my time helping you do something if you don't help me back uh, later? I don't even know if you're going to help me achieve yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah. But also, going back to our issue, 
conversation when you oh. uh, like open and honest and displaying, you know, you're laying your heart out on the oh, table. Lord. People, yeah, and people, you know, you actually build a better connection and um, a better relationship of working together and your yeah, inhibitions are lower than this just because you have a better sense of what that person is or who they are or what they're going through. Or, you know. Yeah, so being open and understanding each other. So the the next building block of, of this, um, this, this dysfunction of the team, a fear of conflict. Why would conflict ever be a good thing in a team? Debate. Debate. Why is that good? Just insights, ideas, or bounces different people's perspectives off each other, and the end up coming to a great conclusion. Yeah, right. So coming back to that point of bringing different perspectives to the group, um, yeah, you, you can challenge each other, and if there's a fear of conflict in the team then you're not going to have that, that healthy debate about whether something is a good idea or not and everyone just kind of will do it anyway because I'm too scared to speak up. It means you're holding things back. Yeah. Holding, yeah, yeah. Holding it back. So the next one is a lack of commitment. Um, and it, we kind of touched on it before, but why would, why would that be important? Yeah, right. If you've got a lack of commitment, you'll be causing the conflict that, that you know, healthy conflict is good, but if you're starting to cause... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it becomes disruptive to the team, right? Uh, so, avoidance of accountability. It's kind of similar to absence of truth, wouldn't it be? In what way? Well, um, if you're, you're lying, if you're not accountable... Or <coughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Like, um, like saying if you're not taking accountability for your actions, you're lying to them, basically. Yeah. So okay. there, there's if you're not if you're not doing it, then there's that lack of trust because yeah. you know it's, this person's not pulling their weight in the team. Yeah. Um, why else is accountability important? I guess if you're avoiding it, you're, you're shifting the blame. You're blaming others for ah. your lack of your shortcoming. Yeah, okay, okay. So it's it's that below the line behaviour of kind of yeah. blaming everyone else and shifting responsibility. It's it's not me. Yeah, okay. So yeah, if we flip the, the five dysfunctions on its head, um, we can kind of say understand that um, if we if we build a team on a foundation of trust. We embrace conflict, we've got the different personalities and perspectives in, in the room and we, we can be, if we trust each other, we can then be um, open enough to, to challenge each other's ideas um, and then we can be committed and accountable and focused on achieving the results of the team. Does that make sense? So, we've, we've looked at a few things today. So we looked at the, the DISC um, profiles and understanding what the differences are between people's preferences and therefore understanding ourselves helps us to understand each other better and communicate better with each other. Um, we looked at that difference between competition and, and collaboration with that red-black game. So um, thinking about the how do we collaborate and how do we create win-win situations, depending on the interpretation of the game. Um, and if we think about the, the, the five behaviours of a cohesive team, we can start to, to build on um, behaviours that are going to be good to bring to our, our team. So hopefully these are, are things that you can take away and think about for your project teams and uh, demonstrate to the judges when you get to, to that presentation that yes, we have thought about these things and, and here's how we can work well together. Make sense? So the last piece is I'm going to, to give everyone your, your DISC report so you can take that one home with you and have a look at um, the, the detail behind your, your results and perhaps the differences between your um, natural versus your adaptive styles. But otherwise, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs>